The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. Having the mind of Christ, having the mind of Christ, or actually uh, the scripture says put on Christ or put on the mind of Christ. Uh, that's how you put on Christ. Uh, you begin to think like Christ used to think when he was here on earth and like he thinks now. And uh, let me tell you what he doesn't think. He doesn't think failure and he doesn't think uh, bad things. He thinks positively. He thinks great, wonderful Good things. Uh, the Bible says, No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God is a giver of all good gifts. In him there is no variableness. See, God doesn't change. He's the same always. There's no variableness. Amen. So, I mean, uh, my, my power company, uh, I found out that the gas and electric was on a variable uh, plan, which I found out I paid too much money because it was unvariable. I don't like vi variable, do you? You know, I like it to be below the average, below, below cost, and um, so I, I had to call the company and deal with that. Anyway, check your bills. <coughs> Maybe there's an extra 100 or $200 you can give to the church from <laughs> instead of the power company. Let's give it to the power of the church, the power of God. Amen. Jeremiah tw chapter 29 and uh, verses 11 through 13 from the New American Standard Bible. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. That means God's plans are good. Good plans. Prosperous plans. Positive plans. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Uh, and that word hope, by the way, is not what you think it is, the way we use the word hope today. You know, hope means to expect something to happen, expectation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, expected to happen. When we read the word hope, it means somebody says, I hope so. Do you believe? I hope so. Well, I hope so too, but do you believe? <laughs> if you, you keep on hoping, nothing will happen. But if you really expect it to happen, then it's really the word is, is, is the wrong translation in the King James Version. should be expectation. <coughs> Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Now see, God is going to listen to his people. When is he going to listen? There are some conditions. First of all, he says he has a plan for every one of us. Secondly, he says that He's going to hear us when we call upon him. 
But we need to do something so that he will hear us and that he will prosper us in, in his plans for us. What is it that we need to do? Verse 13. You will sm- seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So God has a plan already in place for us that will prosper us and enlarge us and encourage us. Good things. For for our welfare, not calamity. But we have only one stipulation. What's the stipulation? That is to seek God with all of our heart. Now, if you seek God half-heartedly, nothing is going to happen, folks. You can go to church 52 times a year or double that if you add Friday or Wednesday or whenever midweek service. Okay, but all you're going to church doesn't mean anything if, if you're not seeking God wholeheartedly. If you're half-heartedly with him and you walk one, way, one, one foot with the world, one foot with, the, uh, with God, it's not going to work. Uh, that's why when Elijah's ministry came in, onto the scene, um, he says, how, how long halt ye between two opinions? Okay, because they were halting between two opinions. They figured, well, uh, let's worship Baal and let's worship God. But uh, they couldn't make up their minds. So they were halting between two opinions. You know, they, they couldn't walk straight. He said, how long halt ye between two opinions? And that's when they decided, after they saw the miracle that God performed through Elijah, when he brought the fire down on the altar, uh, licked up the water and even the stones and, and the sacrifice, that's when the people realized and recognized that the Lord is God, that Yahweh is God, Amen. which is what Elijah's name, el means in the original Hebrew. el means Yahweh is God, and that's what the people confess, Yahweh is God. Yahweh is God. Um, sometimes people have to see a miracle, a manifestation of the power of God, uh, to, to realize and recognize God. Because God is, if God's not doing miracles, somebody else is doing miracles. And you, you don't want to believe in that somebody else. But whoever does miracles, that's got to be God. I mean, the supernatural miracles. I'm talking about the powerful miracles that Jesus performed and, and that he's still performing through the church. And you saw this sister, Bernice, just get up and, and testify in her walk to prove that God had healed her knee. And we're thankful for that. That's a manifestation of the power of God. So we need to seek God with our whole heart. If we're going to prosper, if we're going to succeed, if we're going to see good results, uh, God is willing. But are you willing? Now, God gives Abraham in the, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, God gives Abraham, the father of our faith, three commands. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, 
and form thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So God invites somebody who was a Chaldean from Ur of the Chaldee to come out of his country. Number one, get out of your country. So that's the first realm he's asking us to do, and that is to get out, leave the world system. He's talking to us to leave the world system. Become a new creation in Christ Jesus. How do you become a new creation? By receiving Jesus, accepting him as Lord and Savior. Why do you have to do that? Because, listen, the world is going to hell. And you want to follow Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior who saves you out of the condemnation. There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. So we need to be born again. And when you're born again, you will begin to understand that God has a plan for your life. I have a plan for you, he says. God has a plan for every one of us. You say, but you don't know what I'm going through. I know you are going through some things, and every one of us is going through some things. Even the pastor is going through some things. Uh, you thought it's like fine and dandy for the pastor just because he stands up and preached? Um, it is fine and dandy because I think so. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. It's, it's good. It's good result because I'll tell you what. God's on my side and he's got a plan for me and the plan is success and not failure. Amen. Positive results. That's his plan. That's his plan for me. Before the foundation of the earth, he has called me and chosen me. Amen. And he's called you and chosen you before the foundations of the earth. Before you were born, you were chosen. Think of that. Think of that. God thought of you. When he thought of you, he made you. So, I mean, he created us all in Adam. When Adam and Eve were created, he created the whole human race in Adam and Eve. So you were there in the loins of Adam, your ancestor Adam. So he sent you sin together with him because you were part of him. That's why we have the origi original sin. Because Adam sinned, we were part of him. You know, I mean, you can get upset with Adam. Why did he sin? Why did he do that to me? You know? But you were part of him. Okay? Uh, if you want some more proof of that, you can talk to me later. I'll, I'm not going to go into that. So we need to understand that God has a plan for you and a plan for me, a plan for us. When he called us, when he chose us, when he saved us, he saved us because he has a plan for us. So, number one, leave your country. Number two, leave your family. Now, don't take it to heart. Okay. 
get out of your country and form your kindred, that's your family. That means leave what you have learned and inherited. Leave what you've learned and you inherit it. Uh, we inherit a lot of bad things. But I don't want them. I'm, I'm, you know, curses came down from generation to generation. We inherited that, but we're not, we're, we're not under that anymore. We're not under a curse. Jesus delivered us out of the curse of the law. He became a curse for me and for you so that we will not carry the curse anymore, but we will carry blessing. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I like that. God has given us some free things. Wouldn't you like to know what the free things are that God has given you that you didn't have to pay anything for? Some people want to pay a price for freedom, and, and uh, Jesus already paid for the, for the freedom. The price for the freedom has been paid for. You don't have to do anything to get free. You just accept what God has for you. It's a gift. Open it up. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. He's given us some free things, a lot of free things. And uh, you have to read the Word to find out how much He gave you. It's all in the bank. You're walking around not knowing that you have some good things in the bank for you. All you got to do is write a check. He's given us free things. Here's one of the things he's given us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And that's freely given unto us. So why are you still handling things with your own mind? That's a question. If you have the mind of Christ, why don't you let the mind of Christ work in your mind and in your spirit? We have the mind of Christ. I need, uh, when you think about it, if I have the mind of Christ, that means I'm not going to think negatively anymore. I'm not going to think like an ancestry did things and, and, and the way did, they did things in the past. I've been redeemed. No generational curse is going to affect me anymore because I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. And my mind is after the Lord, and I want to imitate Him. You want to imi if if you want to be like Him, you got to imitate Him. What would Jesus think? What would Jesus do? Before you start thinking on your own, let God think for you. I think you'd be better off if you want to have your plan. Come to fruition, you're going to let God think for you and accept what he says instead of what you're thinking. Because my thinking, your thinking could stink. It smells worse than garbage. Do you ever open up the can of garbage, you know? 
It sinks. That's what happens when I, with our mind. We stink in our thinking. Sometimes we have an attitude. Sometimes we get offended because somebody said something to us. Because we're operating with our own mind. See, believers have to put on Christ. Believers have to put on the mind of Christ. And then the world will change for you. Then your future will be according to the plan of God, not according to your plans. And it shall be well with you. The mind of Christ is what's important. And when I put on the mind of Christ, I need to activate it. Just like when you have a debit card or a credit card, you get it in the mail, they say, you know, call this number and activate it. Uh, can you imagine going to the store and to, to uh, use a credit card and it's not activated? The same thing with your mind. With the mind of Christ, it's got to be activated in you. Okay, stop thinking the way you think and start thinking the way he thinks. Wouldn't that be success all the time? It'd be 100% success if you can work and think and walk like Christ did. I mean, you have an opinion. You have get 100 people in a room and they, they'll have 100 different opinions about one thing. If I said, what color should we paint the church? We'll have 100 opinions. All different. And the, sp the church will split over the colors. <laughs> Go ahead and do it, huh? We ought to renew our mind with the word. I want to find out how God thinks, how Jesus thinks. I've got to read the word of God and find out what, how he thinks so that I will think the same way. And I'm going to think what? The think the word of God. Because when I read the word and find out what the word says about me, I'm going to start thinking the word instead of thinking the old ways and the way the family taught me. Uh, nothing bad about the family, but they, they learned from their family and their ancestry, and it was always bad. I mean, oh, what does the mother say to her kid when he's climbing up a, a, a couch or something? Uh, get down before you fall down and break your neck. Well, what kind of a teaching is that? I mean, instead of saying, be careful, honey, Okay, you got to send a curse to the kid to break his neck. Why would you do that? No, nah, nobody here ever said that to their kids. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think the way th Christ thinks, and, and, and he wouldn't talk like that, would he? Hebrews 11, 18 through 12. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inher inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God, heavenly Jerusalem. Abraham was thinking. Abraham was called by God to go out of the country of the Chaldeans into a country that God was going to show him. It was going to be what God shows him. Not what he imagined, what he thought. But you know what uh, I like about Abraham, the father of fa our faith? He was not looking for a, an earthly city. 
like a lot of preachers are saying. He was not looking for an earthly inheritance. He was looking for a heavenly city, a heavenly inheritance. He was not focused on the things of earth. You know what his, his passion was? He was seeking things that are heavenly and looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. That's heavenly Jerusalem that came, comes down from heaven. Amen. You know, Abraham was promised that he's going to have many nations. Physically, he was going to have many nations. Uh, let me tell you, uh, the last verse here I want to read. Um, Verse 12, therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. So Abraham was promised a heavenly seed, the stars. That's the church. And he was also promised an earthly seed. That's through his son Isaac and through his son Ishmael. Because Ishmael was told he's going to have, uh, he's going to rule over 12. He will have 12 rulers come out of him. So Ishmael, Isaac, did he have more children? Yes, he did. In uh, Genesis 25, he had Six more children from Keturah. They all became nations. Midian was one of them, and the Midianites and the Israelites were fighting. They're all from Abraham. They were cousins. They were fighting each other. But Abraham's focus, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For your life is hid with Christ in God. If we focus on heavenly things, guess what? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, guess what's going to happen? All these things, the material things, the earthly things will be added. Don't have to worry about earthly things. I'll be taken care of. Set your affections on things above. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.